In the time leading to World War II, there was a prominent voice of evil that was continuing to propagate itself in the minds and in the hearts of many that were watching. Although many knew what he was saying was wrong, they failed to speak up. Adolf Hitler destroyed the lives of millions of Jews. Here's the real tragedy of that story. It all could have been prevented if people spoke up and stopped such wickedness from taking place. Let that stand as a warning, because today we are seeing a repeat of history, and more than ever, we have an obligation to never let history repeat itself. It's time to stand up, folks. It's a matter of life and death. All right, folks, let's get into this. I'm just going to say this right now. What we are looking at and the headline that I'm looking at right now makes it very clear that we are not in a proud moment for our country. Our country has a lost its complete mind, and so many people that we allow to be in office are running a complete muck. They have gone out of, they're just completely out of control, okay? Now, I'm going to start with this story, and then I'm going to create a case for you as into why this story is reflective of the fact that we are completely destroying our own nation and we are literally hanging ourselves. I mean, literally, we are completely destroying anything and everything that even remotely resembles good or precious in this country because of a bunch of insane leftists that have completely lost their minds. And for all of those pastors that marched with these people, uh, you know, in the name of George Floyd and all kinds of equality and all that kind of stuff, you're a bunch of big, fat hypocrites. Hypocrites! for not standing up for what's right, especially as it relates to Israel. You have all lost your minds. Look at this title. This title is uh, it, it's just, uh, it's unbelievable. Let me read it to you. It says this, 92 Democrats vote present and 13 vote against a resolution condemning a surge of anti-Semitism and equating it with anti-Zionism. Folks, I read it correctly. Let me read the article to you, okay? And by the way, don't get me wrong here. I think this is insane on the part of anybody who does not actually want to admit publicly that it's wrong to hate Jews, okay? They said it in World War II, and it came true for people all over Europe that had to learn the lesson the hard way. If you don't speak up about the persecution of Jews, they're going to end up coming after you. And that's exactly what happened all over Europe. It was a terrible mess. And the same thing is about to happen worldwide. Let's read the good news in this article, okay? The good news is this. The House overwhelmingly passed a resolution to condemn anti-Semitism in the U.S. and around the world in another show of support for Israel in its war with Hamas terrorists in Gaza. It goes on to say the vote on the measure condemning anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism was 311 to 14 with 92 Democrats voting present and 17 members not voting. Yes, folks, not voting. 13 Democrats, including the squad, right? Representatives Jamil Bowman, uh, Cory Bush, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, which by the way, Rashida Tlaib, and all of her friends literally are calling for the destruction of Jewish lives. Whether or not anybody wants to admit it, that's what they continue to say when they say from the river to the sea. They're evil people. A group of Jewish Democrats, including representatives Jerry Nadler and Dan Goldman, both of New York and Jamie Raskin of Maryland, voted present on the resolution and called it the latest unserious attempt by Republicans to weaponize Jewish pain. What an absurd... What an absurd pile of garbage. What a crock. It's completely ridiculous. Notice this. Only one Republican, uh, Representative Thomas Massey of Kentucky, voted against it. Ahead of the vote, he posted a meme with the rapper Drake suggesting Congress has done more to support Zionism than American patriotism. Folks, I don't even want to get into the problems of that. I don't even want to start. To, I, 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 for just Let's move on with the point because... Just dealing with that alone is just so messed up. Let me skip a paragraph, folks. Let me read this portion. 
It says the Democrats who voted present noted that last week the House already passed a resolution asserting that denying Israel's right to exist is a form of anti-Semitism. Uh, duh. Duh, you think? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to pass a resolution that says the sky is blue. It's that ridiculous. It's, it's just ridiculous. The group also noted that there are Jewish anti-Zionists, including the Satmar sect, who are quite obviously not anti-Semitic. That's a whole other issue that we can go back and deal with. I, I, I'm not even going to get into some of those ridiculous arguments, but we could talk about that on another video at another time. But look what it goes on to say. It says some liberals, let's replace it with leftists, right? Some leftists have expressed concerns that such sentiment could lead to characterizing any criticism of the Israeli government as anti-Semitism. Folks, I want everybody to understand something. Anti-Semitism is very, very easy to define, okay? If I am a critic of the policy of, of the leader of Israel, that does not make me an anti-Semite. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even come close to make me an anti-Semite. We have spent a lot of time being critical of many of the policies uh, of different leaders in Israel, and we have spent a lot of time speaking about why we think those issues are the way they are, and we have spent a lot of time contending for the people in that land and have never, ever, ever been in danger of being anti-Semitic. These people absolutely hate Jews and they continue to function as such. And the thing that kills me is they hide behind a whole bunch of lies that the Jews are oppressors and they've, you know, entered into their own land and they've squashed Arabs away from their country and so on and so forth. Let me explain something to you, okay? This is really important to understand. If you look at Gaza alone, at the time that Israel stepped into Gaza in 1967. There were 80,000 Arabs, 80,000. Today, in 2023, there are over two and a half million Arabs in Gaza. Is there genocide going on? 80,000 to two million. You tell me, is there any genocide happening? Let's talk about Judea Samaria. Let's talk about all of Israel proper. You have, at best, in 1948, 180,000 Arabs. 180,000 Arabs. 180,000. Now, there are over 3 million. I'm not even counting Gaza. You tell me, how in the world can there be genocide happening? The numbers don't lie. This is absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to show you a chart. And in a second, I hope that this chart will become a vivid and powerful reminder of what the truth is. Look at the chart right here. This is critically important. Pay attention to the numbers. It shows several Arab nations, Algeria, Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, Libya, Morocco, Syria, Tunisia, Yemen, Aden. Look at the numbers. Some of the most dominant are just mind-boggling. Okay, Iraq. 135,000 Jews were in Iraq in 1948. How many are in Iraq today? Arguably, maybe five or six. The last recorded number that we have in 2018 says in that area, there were less than 10. In Libya, you had 38,000, 38,000 Jews in Libya, zero as of 2018. Look at these numbers, folks. If you start going, look at Algeria, 140,000. As of 2018, less than 50. Egypt, 75,000. As of 2018, even with the peace treaty and everything else that exists, 100. And the number is probably smaller than that. Iraq, 135,000. It starts with less than 10 today. Lebanon, 5,000. Less than 100. Libya, 38,000. It's at zero. We went over that number. Morocco, 265,000 Jews were in Morocco in 1948. By 2018, there were 2,150. Look at these numbers, folks. If you look at the total, this is staggering. Are you ready for this? This is insane. There were 851,000 Jews in just these Arab nations, not all of them, just these ones. 
1948. 851,000. And now there are 3,330 as of 2018, and that number is less. Who's doing the genocide? Who's killing who? Let me play the words of the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. And I want you to understand that what he says here is remarkably powerful because it's very true. I have one sentence to share as soon as this is done. So pay close attention to what he says. It's very powerful. Look at this picture. This picture tells you everything you need to know about this conflict. This is Haj Amin al Husseini, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, and one of the founding fathers of Palestinian nationalism. Al Husseini dedicated his life to ensuring that there would be no Jewish presence in Israel or in any Arab land. And it was the Mufti's ideology which sparked the expulsion of Jews from Arab countries and Iran. A century ago, council members, over one million Jews lived in Arab countries. One million Jews. Yet today, there are only a couple thousands. Where did all the Jews disappear to? The Jews of Lebanon, the Jews of Syria, Yemen, Iraq, and Iran, they were expelled. So enough with the, the hypocrisy. Yep. Enough with the hypocrisy. Folks, I'm going to make myself clear. If we don't speak up about this evil, this evil will eventually affect you. It already is affecting you and me. The problem that existed in World War II during Nazi Germany was the failure of people to speak up and tell the truth, especially pastors in the ministry. We have an obligation to point out what is wrong here, and this is terribly wrong. We need to speak up. We need to stand up for the truth. Everything depends upon it. It's time to fight the good fight, you guys. We are running out of time. Christ could come for his church at any moment, and I, for one, do not want to get caught not doing the business of my father. God bless you guys.